Hello, I'm going to talk about Rails Girls and diversity in software engineering. I'm Haruka Iwao, and my Twitter account is Yuryu, so feel free to follow me on Twitter. I'm working at Red Hat as a solutions architect, and I'm working with distributed storage, like last IFS or Ceph, and I also am interested in operating systems like Linux or Windows. In the first part, I'm going to show our current situation or issues we have. Do you know what this graph shows? 60 men and no women. This is the number of speakers at Ruby Kage last year, 2013. We had only male speakers and no female speakers. On the other hand, we have almost 7 billion population in the world and half of them are men and half of them are women. So where does this difference come from? At text conference, we have no female speakers while we have a lot of women in the world. Comparing other text conferences, we have almost around 5% of female speakers in Japan, like Ruby Kagi, or PyCon JP, or LinuxCon JP, and around 10% of female speakers in tech conferences in the United States, like RubyConf, or PyCon US, or LinuxCon North America. And at the PyCon US 2014, this year, they had almost one-third of female speakers there. So let's look at the tech companies. Recently, many companies showed their employees ratio of gender or, or race. And here is the summary of some famous tech companies like Twitter, Facebook, or Google. They have the purple area shows the female employees in tech areas. And Many companies have like 15% or 20% of female engineers, while most of them are male. So why we have fewer women at tech sections? How about students? The red points is the rate of female students at science fields. And the blue point in the middle is the average of all fields. So we have fewer women in the science field at universities or colleges. So two questions arise from this data. Why do we choose other fields than computer science. And the other question is, why do you have fewer women engineers compared to graduates, I mean, university or college graduates? So let's look at the first question. Why do you mean choose other fields than computer science? This problem is a bit, bit complicated, but I tried to explain there is an always pressure being a good girl. So there are girlish and boy thingy in the world, almost in every country. And for example, playing with dolls or being a railway enthusiast, or sewing, needlework, driving, they, they are all categorized like boyish or girlish. And search with Google Images, and you will see the difference. For example, scientists. You will see a lot of male scientists, often comic in cartoon. And on the other hand, let's look at florists. You will see female florists. How about computer programmer? You will mostly see male 
computer programmer on Google Images or housekeeper, you will see female housekeepers. Uh, let's see some different category. CEO, you will see male CEO only. On the other hand, if you search with executive secretary, you will see mostly female images. How did the difference come from? And I'm showing a video which is popular on YouTube. Maybe some of you have watched this before, but I'll show you this anyway, because it hints a lot. Hi, Erin. Hi. Okay, so I'm gonna just give you some actions to do. I just do the first thing that comes to mind. Show me what it looks like to run like a girl. <laughs> my hair. Oh my God. Show me what it looks like to fight like a girl. <laughs> now throw like a girl. Aww. My name is Dakota and I'm 10 years old. Show me what it looks like to run like a girl. Throw like a girl. Fight like a girl. What does it mean to you when I say run like a girl? It means run fast as you can. So do you think you just insulted your sister? No. I mean, yeah, insulted girls, but not my sister. Is like a girl a good thing? I actually don't know what it really, if it's a bad thing or a good thing. It sounds like a bad thing. It sounds like you're trying to humiliate someone. So when they're in that vulnerable time, between 10 and 12, how do you think it affects them when somebody uses like a girl as an insult? I think it definitely drops their self-confidence and um, really puts them down because during that time they're already trying to figure themselves out and when somebody says you hit like a girl it's like well what does that mean because they think they're a strong person it's kind of like telling them that they're weak and they're not as good as them and what advice do you have to young girls who are told they run like a girl, kick like a girl, hit like a girl, swim like a girl? Keep doing it, because it's working. If somebody else says that running like a girl, or kicking like a girl, or shooting like a girl is something that you shouldn't be doing, that's their problem. Because if you're still scoring, and you're still getting to the ball in time, and you're still being first, you're doing it right. It doesn't matter what they say. I mean. Yes, I kick like a girl, and I swim like a girl, and I walk like a girl, and I wake up in the morning like a girl, because I am a girl. And that is not something that I should be ashamed of. So I'm gonna do it anyway. That's what they should do. If I asked you to, to run like a girl now, would you do it differently? I would run like myself. Would you like a chance to redo it? Why can't run like a girl also mean win the race? So this movie maybe has some hints with the issues we have. So at the age of 10 and between 10 and 12, young girls or kids are affected by our culture. So even in 2014, there are some gender gap between men and women. And this Google search results, or this movie is not from the 20th century. This is from yesterday. And the gap is from our culture. So we have to change our culture, but we have to respect our culture at the same time. This is quite difficult, to be, but we have to change. And the second question, why do we have 
few are women engineers compared to graduates. Uh, when we, you see at the universities, they all have more than 30% of female students in tech fields, but at, at tech companies, we have fewer than 30. So I gave you two questions. So raise your hands. Do you take into account candidates' gender when deciding higher no hires? 採用するときに応募者の性別を気にしますかはいと思う人は手を挙げてください。Yes, some of you. Yeah, a little of you. Only a few. And the second question. Do you ask candidates to submit a resume with their gender written? 履歴書に性別を書いたレジュメを提出してもらっていますかはいという人。A more. Let's see. Here is the most common resume format used in Japan. This is called GIS, GIS format. And GIS means Japan Industrial, St Industrial Standard. And most Japanese companies require applicants to submit resume in this format. And in this format, GIS requires your birthday, including your age, just, be, just below to your name, and your gender, male or female, and your photo. Moreover, it requires the number of dependent family members, it means your number, number of kids, number of your kids. And martial status, if you are married or not married here, and here, does your spouse need to be covered by your health plan or something pension like? So in other words, this question is, does your spouse work full time? So every, almost every Japanese company require applicants to submit the data. So they are literally collecting gender, martial status before interviewing or screening their resume. Also, web entry forms or recruiting agency papers require this information. Why? Because they use such information. Uh, some, of some of the companies use these fields during interviews or decision making process. So Google, fem female or women interviews questions in Japanese, just say, message small, and you will see a lot of questions like, do plan to have a child, or do you, I go, I, do you want to quit your job when you have a child, or what is a husband's job? There are a lot of questions asked only to women in the interview of Japanese companies. And let's take a look at the conferences at Rubikai 2013. There was an incident where, in a nutshell, a speaker said, come to Taiwan because Taiwan girls are kawaii or cute. And of course, it was joking, but some, some attendees didn't feel comfortable with it. And then the Ruby Kaigi staff posted an apologize on their official blog. And that attitude was not appropriate at international tech conferences. So what, we, what can we do to improve the situation? At work, you can ask candidates not to write gender even if you are using the GIS standard resume format. Or at least you can ask your human resources department to hide it if your candidates write the agenda. Or be careful when making questions at interviews. Consider your interview questions. And once they're hired, respect everyone as individual professionals. And we can work to make our community feel so at Ruby Kaigi, we have no harassment 
policy and absolutely no discrimination or harassment should be allowed at tech conferences or any, any other conferences. Or of course, anywhere, but especially offshore events like this. We, I mean, both men and women attend conferences because it is interesting and fun or your proposal is accepted, so you are chosen as a speaker, or just we want to learn something. But it's not because someone is beautiful or kawaii. And you can join your local activities. Rail girls, I'll explain what Rail girls is later, but Rail girls is looking for sponsors or volunteers or participants. So we encourage your colleagues or children to join your local activities. Not only as girls, but, but there are many. Here is a just small list. Made with code, we got zebra plate, red bridge, or pie ladies from the Python community, or there are two others by running by an MPO in the United States or C++ is run by a university, I think. There are many. And Red Girls is one of them. So I will introduce Red Girls and try, try to convince you to want to join the activity. Red Girls is a Red tutorial for women primarily targeted for me, but not limited to. And in the official page, it says, our aim is to give tools and the community for me to understand technology and to build their, their ideas. And it, it was founded by Linda Lucas and Carly Seren in Helsinki. Here is a brief, brief history of all else girls. It was Founded in November 2011 in Helsinki, Finland. And in 2012, the first Wales Girls was held in Tokyo, here. And now, Wales Girls activities spread all over the world in more than 150 cities, and we had more than 212 events so far. And here is a map. The red, red orange points shows the each Rails Girls event. And literally, it's held worldwide, including Africa and South America, Australia, New Zealand, all over the Europe, and a few in Russia, perhaps, and of course, in Asian countries. And this is some, these are some photos from Rails Girls, past Rails Girls. So we mean, at the bottom is Linda, the co-founder of Rails Girls. This is how, what we teach at Rails Girls. The tutorial begins with very basic stuff like installing Rails or Rails new, Rails build your first application with Rails, but it is pros, it advanced to more Detailed topics like pushing your application to GitHub or putting your application online like Heroku. And we also try to introduce some other stuff like bootstrap and apply style sheet to your application to make it look more interesting. And we, for example, introduce to how to add authentication with Rails and moreover, if we have time or applicants and participants are familiar with the programming already, we may show how to add profile pics with Gravatar or how to write our spec and test your application. Or even we can try continuous delivery with Travis. And there are more lot of advanced topics available on the guide guys.rails.com and you will see a lot of basic and advanced tutorial there. 
And we had six or where girls in Japan, in Tokyo, Kyoto, Sapporo, Nara, Osaka, Nagoya, and Matsue. And we have another Rare Girls Tokyo in the, uh, on the next Sunday, this weekend. The application is already closed, but you can, f f we, we, I'm sure we'll have another Rare Girls in the near future. And it's sponsored by various companies. And here are some icons or pictures drawn by volunteers to represent each city. And some interesting rare girls is held in Poland, Krasko. It's called the Rare Girls Youth to encourage young girls or teenager, teenagers to learn, learn programming before making their important decisions like which college they go or in which field they will study. So they are all teenagers from 10 or 12 to 19 years old. They all learn Ruby and Rails. And in the final section of presentation, I'll talk about Rails cards and me. My first Rails cards was Rails Girls Tokyo second. It was March 2013, and I participated at, as a girl, which means a trainee, and I went through the tutorial and learned how to code with Rails. And my second Rails, uh, second Rails Girls is Rails Girls Tokyo third. It was October 2013, so they are in the same year, and I participated as a coach. On the right photo, I'm trying to explain how, how, uh, what, what, class, what class is. And in learning, you will teach, and in teaching, you will learn. So teaching someone is also a process of learning something. So I, I encourage you to try to teach something. And at Rubikagi 2014 here, I'm here to talk about Rails cards and the other activities. So it's your turn now. Apply to Rails cards or join any other local activities or you can change your company the way to process your resume, or you can do ju just anything. There are a lot of things you can do. So this is my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, we have five minutes for questions. Does anyone have any questions? Ah. Uh, nice presentation, thank you. Uh, so I have a young niece and I was wondering if you have any advice to get young girls into engineering or programming. Well, I'm not sure, but for example, let them participate in one of these activities because these activities are held worldwide and try them to join one of them or buy them some books about computer programming for young people. Thank you. So try to find friends who also are interested in programming. That's the easiest way to learn, begin learning. This is more of a follow-up to the previous question, but I don't know how old your niece is, but one of the um, co-founders of Rails Girls 
is writing a book, sort of a, a picture book for younger children to get into programming, girls and boys. But if uh, probably like, I don't know, five to 10 year old age, it's a really cool book. And it's also about Ruby, which is, which is very cool. It's a good language to learn, I think, out of the onset. So you should definitely check that out. So not a question, sorry. But. Yeah. Thank you for the follow up. Uh, thank you for the great talk, and uh, I'm Man, and uh, personally I feel that your presentation was the mainly the message for the girls, but do you have any specific uh, uh, expectation for men to support, the, to grow? Uh, the girls' community or something. Uh, what kind of uh, support, uh, in general, uh, men can do? Well, treat women engineers as professionals, not, not girls or, or yeah, not girls. Treat them as women, and and respect each other. And it's the best way to introduce and bring women to the tech field. If you or at work, and if you have small children, for example, buy them some books or try them to encourage them to join a community or join some events held local. And, and for example, in Japan, even in Japan, there, there are some activities like girls, girls you, you can join there as a coach to encourage young women to learn programming. There are a bunch of stuff you can do. So just to confirm, so for the Rails Girls community, it's welcome for them to uh, join uh, the men. Yeah, uh, as, a, as a staff or, or volunteer staff, organizers, coach, we are always looking for good, good stuff. I understand and totally I agree. Thank you very much. And, uh, let me continue. The most important thing is to treat female engineers as swimming individual professionals. That's the most, most important thing. Thank you. More questions? Last one. So thank you for the talk. Uh, just wondering, so you have Rails for girls, but like, do you have any, like for a woman? Because basically if the girls learn programming, if they get to the job market and they, like how does that work, right? If they, there's still all these issues, uh, social issues related to women. Well, it's written as a workshop for girls and women in small characters here. Ah, uh, so okay. we don't risk, restrict by age. And the Rails Girls use is specially tailored for young teenagers. Okay, but what about women? Like, profit, like once they get to, they've done the engineering program and they get to the job market, do they have like any kind of support network to, well, to help them? Uh, Rails Girls Japan is accepting women like 30 or 40 years old, and there are many local activities like Linux, Linux Joshibu, which means Linux Women Club or Study Group, or Google, Google Users Group for women. Uh, there are many local activities, and they also have some events for female engineers to, to learn new technologies or demonstrate their, uh, or try them to talk in public. So I, I think these are maybe marked activities, for example. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Haruka Iwao. Thank you. Hi. Good time.